Are you ready to dive in another thrilling entry in the Yakuza series? Are you ready to experience an action-packed, intense crime drama set in Yokohama, Japan? Then you're in the right place. Like a Dragon is an excellent game to pick up whether you're new to the series or a seasoned Yakuza expert, though it may be a little different than what you're used to. But fear not, in this video, I'm going to provide all the spoiler-free tips you require to get the most out of your game the first time. I'm Chill, and this is the ultimate Like a Dragon Beginner's Guide. Yakuza Like a Dragon came out in both Japan and North America on the PS4 on January 10th, 2020. It's the seventh main installment in the Yakuza series, and the first developed as a turn-based RPG. And in contrast to the other games in the series, it shifts focus from Kazuma Kiryu to a new protagonist named Ichiban Kasuga. Ichiban was first introduced in the 2018 mobile game Ryuga Gotoku Online, a freemium collectible card game and spin-off. Though Ichiban was originally only going to be in the mobile title, it was the decision of executive director and franchise creator Toshihiro Nagoshi that Ichiban was positioned as the leader in the future mainline entry games. Since then, Yakuza Like a Dragon has received enthusiastically positive reviews from both players and critics, praising the game for its narrative, characters, gameplay, presentation, and unique take on the JRP genre. Let's get into the nitty gritty. First of all, let me remind you to save. You can save anywhere in the game as long as you're not in a dungeon. In dungeons, you will only be able to save at designated points, and it's always a good idea to save before taking the next step that might advance the main story. You don't want to lose your progress if you get thrust into a situation where you end up dying. When you first start out in Like a Dragon, you're going to be very low on money, so for that reason, you might not want to spend too much. To get a little coin, don't forget to stop over by the vending machines. Sometimes you can even find treasure, such as plates that you can sell. Like in most JRPGs, know that if you're in a pinch, you can use a party member's healing skills when you're out of combat if you want to max out before you start your next battle. But I would recommend stopping at a restaurant instead of doing this. Another thing to know when playing Like a Dragon is not to try to rush through the main story of the game or you will get punished. If you get defeated, Take some time to regroup, get better gear, do some side stories, grind some dungeons, or do some other side content for extra experience. Many minigames will allow you to earn a special currency that's only useful for purchasing items at the minigame vendor in question. There you can find rare insects, weapons, restorative items, boosters, personality books, and more. Even if you don't have any interest in playing something like Shogi, you might change your mind once you see the rewards, so make sure to check out the offerings at the vendor for the CanQuest game, Shogi, Dragon Cart, and more to see what they have to offer. Lastly, remember to claim your DLCs once you get your smartphone in-game. There were DLCs released after launch and added in patches, and some players might not even realize they have to claim those packs, but you should. They include new costumes and materials for crafting. If you're familiar with turn-based JRPGs at all, you should feel right at home here. It's pretty intuitive, just like any other game in the genre. At the beginning of an encounter, you select whether to use special skills, guard, attack, tag out, or use the miscellaneous menu for items. Tag out just means to swap out the character for someone else on your roster. When you first get into battle, you'll want to check the positioning because if an enemy gets toppled next to a party member, they will often follow up with an opportune strike. Know that you can also get interrupted by an enemy if you cross paths with them while targeting another. They'll sometimes block you and this will cost you a turn. And if you find that you and your party are way over your heads and you're going to be defeated, you can hold L1 to flee. You'll always want to have a good selection of restorative items on hand, including medicines that will resolve certain status effects. You can buy some of the best ones at the pharmacy or get bentos made at the survive bar. You also don't want to neglect to upgrade your equipment. Having the right armor, weapons, and accessories can make the difference between surviving and failing an encounter. Keep on the lookout for weapons with elemental damage and status effects. Any of your characters can die and be revived in battle except for Ichiban. If he dies, it will result in a game over, 
So do your best to keep him alive and know that there is a skill that will allow him to cheat death at 1 HP with the hero job. Also know that if Ichiban dies out in the field, you will lose 50% of all your money, which is a pretty steep penalty. If you're in the middle of a conflict with a boss or a story battle, you can continue, but not without paying the penalty. So to protect yourself from losing too much money, you can make regular deposits at an ATM. Around chapter four, Ichiban will unlock the ability to start summoning pound mates. Pound mates are similar to summons in the Final Fantasy series where you call upon powerful entities to vanquish your foes. You'll continue to unlock additional pound mates by doing sub-stories, side content, and story progression. Calling on a summon will put the pound mates on a cooldown, so consider how to use them strategically as you can't use them over and over. And some pound mates are only available under certain conditions or times of day. The job system opens up in chapter 5, and I'm not going to go too terribly deep into it in this video, as that could be another video I create later on, but here I will provide an overview that will give you an idea of how it works and what to look for. There are exclusive jobs that are only available to specific characters. There are eight male-only jobs, such as Breaker, a job where you bust out sick moves on the battlefield. There are also four female-only jobs, such as Idol, musical singing stars who can heal the party with enchanting songs. Lastly, there are a couple of DLC jobs, such as Devil Rocker and Matriarch, but they require high levels before you can unlock them and use them in the game. Jobs are unlocked based on the level of your party members, Ichiban's personality stats, and the bond ranks of your party members. Every character has a starting job, though Ichiban has two. Know that when you swap jobs, you won't have all of the jobs available skills immediately, but don't let this discourage you from trying them out. Each job also has its own weapon class, and each job has its own skills you earn by leveling up. Here I'm going to take a moment to show you what to look out for when assessing the skills for these jobs. If you see a red circle next to a skill, it means that after you've leveled up your core character, you will retain these skills. You won't lose the skills if you switch jobs. If you see a green circle, it means it's exclusive to that particular job. You'll also find that there are some passive stat boosts that your characters permanently retain as they level up. Below, I'll provide a link to some recommended party compositions for every level up to the end game, but uh, be careful when examining it not to get spoiled. Around Chapter 5, you'll open up a feature called Part-Time Hero. As you unlock this feature, you might have noticed that you'll also have something akin to the completion list you're used to seeing in other Yakuza games. This list shows the number of activities you still have yet to complete in the game. The list also reveals how doing certain activities will improve Kasuga's personality. You just have to access the menus to find the items of interest. With Part-Time Hero, there are three different kinds of quests. Support quests, where you have to find certain items for someone, essentially a grocery list. Rescue quests, where you have to take down a number of enemies of a certain type. And then there are challenge quests, which you complete by finding things around town, doing mini games, or getting into battles. After you finish these quests, there are four locations around Yokohama, where you can go to turn them in for rewards. When you turn them in, you'll get personality boosts, which brings us to the next topic of this video. Before, I mentioned something of a completion list found in the part-time hero menus. Finishing tasks on the completion list will award you with points for Ichiban's six personality stats, which allow him to access new areas, new sub-stories, unlock new jobs, and boost resistance to some status effects. One easy way to check your personality progress is to go into Party, then Stats. There you can also monitor your bond levels with other characters in your party. Personality unlocks will help you access the casinos in Yokohama. They both require a confidence level of 4 before they become accessible. Improving personality attributes also makes certain people on the street hireable for the Ichiban Confectionery Business minigame. You'll have a bigger roster of talent to choose from for your business. Developing your personality is also key to completing certain romantic sub-stories, where Ichi starts up a relationship with certain ladies in the game. We'll discuss that in more detail later in this video. There are various things you can do to boost the dimensions of your personality. One of them is completing tests at the vocational school. 
Though it costs a lot to finish them, it is an effective way to get boosts. Just know that some of the answers to the exams at the vocational school may be completely unknown to you. Below I will link a table containing all of the answers that you might need. Part-time challenge quests are another way to boost your personality. Also, every time you see a movie for the first time at the Vintage Movie Theater, it will boost a certain attribute. There are other things you can do for minor improvements, such as selecting certain answers in sub-stories and drink link conversations. So you'll want to do that strategically. Below, I'll link a guide to which personality trait gets boosted by every answer during drink link sessions. Apart from that, you can also use certain growth items by either finding them in briefcases or buying them from minigame vendors. You can also go to Hong Kongs. There are people who provide special services around town, and we'll talk more about them in a bit. When checking party stats, you'll find these pink gauges where you can measure your bond level. This is how close you are to each party member. It starts at zero and can go as high as five. At every level that a party member's bond increases, they'll get an extra 10% experience point gain. When they're capped at level five bond, they'll get 100%. So here's what to watch out for. Once you've filled up your party member's bond gauge to the lock, you can head over to Survive Bar to unlock it doing an event called the Drink Link. Different answers during the Drink Link events will boost certain personality attributes. For this reason, you'll also want to check your personality stats every time before starting. After the Drink Link sessions, bonds will unlock and you will sometimes obtain access to new jobs. Maxing out bonds with your party members also unlocks something called bond skills, and these are special moves that can be performed by cooperating with your party members in battle. At the beginning of the game, you're not going to be able to explore much. Around chapter 4 or so is when most of the rest of the map opens up and you'll be able to explore the clouded sections of the map. Know that as you venture out, some areas will have stronger enemies than others, and the map will tell you when you're in danger of experiencing encounters that might be a little bit tough. Here's some things to keep in mind. Always interact with every taxi that you see. I'll leave a link to a map below where you can find them all. Interact with each taxi once, even if you don't need to go anywhere. You'll then be able to use them later as waypoints from other taxis. This will save you a little time running over the map if there's some place you want to get to quickly. Another thing that you might find while out in the open world are safes. They're found in explorable dungeons and regular dungeons, and there's two different kinds, silver safes and gold safes. To open a silver safe, you will need to have a silver safe skeleton key, and that's something you can get near the end of chapter three. It will open every silver safe you find. The gold keys, on the other hand, are only available in two secret shops, and I'll tell you exactly where to find them. The foreman job is only available for Kasuga by hitting a level 3 on Charisma, which I did in Chapter 5 by carefully selecting answers during drink links and party chat in the open world. He can use the demolish ability to remove boards covering the location. At Fumi, you can buy cheat tokens for the slot machines, accessories for boosting job XP, and of course, gold keys. The Black Market Merchant can only be accessed during Chapter 6, and you'll find it in a boarded up hut on the first rooftop on the east side of Yokohama. He sells battle items, accessories, and of course gold keys. The last shop, Mangekyo, is found in the Bar District. Down in the Bar District, you might have noticed some stairs leading behind the bars into the Riverside Walkway. There you will find the last secret shop. The place sells accessories and battle items but no gold keys. By the way, I also noticed that after you play the foreman job, you'll still have the demolish ability when you switch roles. Around chapter six, these sparkly little Tojo crests start appearing on every map. You can use these to purchase special items from a vendor that you shouldn't have any trouble discovering on your own. I recommend saving up enough of these crests so you can purchase the most expensive items offered by that vendor, and I'll leave it to you to discover what those are. Below I've linked to Cyrix Guide where you can find every crest. Let's talk about party chats. Party chat is triggered by walking in specific places around town and pressing the appropriate button prompt, triangle or Y. For you to get a check mark, you have to listen to the entire conversation. In order for certain party chats to unlock, you don't necessarily have to have all the included members for the chat in your active party, only in your roster. 
So this next bit of knowledge was something that I had overlooked in my first playthrough. If you've been playing the Yakuza series for a while now, you might already know that dining at a restaurant is one way to restore your health, but it costs money. To save money early on, you can return to your base to restore your party to full health on the map here. And later on in the game, you can find a rest station above the survive bar. But when dining out, did you know that certain food combinations at restaurants also can give you experience, improve the bonds between the members of your party, and give you a buff? That's right, uh, certain meal combinations will give you a buff for your next fight, so if you eat three certain meal combos, you'll stack three buffs for your next three battles. I'll link a table to the combinations in the description. Sometimes when you order these meal combinations, it will trigger a short and entertaining conversation between party members. All the locations for party chats and table talks are linked below. I'll also keep a tab to this chart on my phone or laptop when I play the game. As much as it might be a source of pain for some players, I recommend playing at least halfway through the Ichiban Confectionery minigame as soon as it unlocks in Chapter 5. I've made two videos on the topic, so you can check the description below for links to the guides. Though those videos are thorough, there are just a few more notes I'd like to add. When I played through the business management minigame, I didn't really know what I was doing, but somehow I got through it to number one anyway. I feel that most players should be able to clear this content even if they're unclear on the concepts, and you'll definitely want to make progress in this minigame as soon as possible, as you'll unlock another party member that you'll want on your roster. I bought the Management Mode Set DLC to see how it would impact the campaign, and let me tell you, the improvement it makes is incredibly dramatic. Right off the bat, I had access to as much talent as I would ever need for any property that I could purchase. I could immediately make every business profitable, so this really trivialized the difficulty you might have with finding employees with certain attributes. But if you don't like this minigame and you want to get through it as quickly and efficiently as possible, the DLC is an option. It's completely possible to complete the minigame without it. Being profitable right off the bat just seemed to reduce the amount of time it took for me to get through the first half of the minigame and unlock the bonus character. And by getting those bonus executive checks early on, I was able to purchase several materials from the truck in Hamakita Park as early as Chapter 5. I could then go to the Romance Workshop and acquire several upgrades I might not have had access to otherwise. Someone asked me a bit ago how to extract the money from the business to your personal in-game account, and I wanted to say that you can't do that. But what you can do is get bonus checks right after shareholder meetings that go right into your pocket. So by the time you hit number one, you should get a bonus of about 3 million or so, and it costs about 20 million to fully upgrade the Romance Workshop. So now you know, you can grind shareholder meetings for money as many times as you might want until you can afford that. Let's briefly talk about shareholder meetings, which was the topic of another video I've made. You all probably already understood that you can immediately smash the defenses of a shareholder's questioning by answering with questions of a certain color, whether red, green, or blue. That's explained in my video on the topic. But what had eluded me is that you don't need to keep answering with that character after you smash through the defenses. At that point, you can immediately switch to someone with a higher persuasion rating to break down their bars almost immediately. So if that wasn't clear in my video, I hope this explanation helps. If you're playing without DLC, I think the character that has the most persuasion you can get is Eri. She has a rating of 1000. However, with the DLC, I use Songhui and her persuasion is over 500. After you get the hang of it, you can get 100% approval almost every time. Earlier on, I described some of the methods by which you can build up different aspects of your personality. Your self-development impacts your ability to attract certain women, your female party members, as well as four other women you meet through the story. Sumire Sawa, met through the Romance Workshop, Rika, met through Hello Work, Minaya Miyakoshi, met at the Unabora Vocational School, and Iroha Yanagi, hostess of Survive Bar. These four non-party members each have a favorite plant, and your relationship with them all plays out in the same way. You start by chatting with them, then you buy them a bouquet of flowers or their favorite plant. Plants like flowers or bonsai can either be purchased from the truck in the park or grown through seeds and handed over to the bartender at Survive Bar to process. More on planting and gardening in a moment. 
Once the personality attributes the woman in question prefers is at level 7, chat with them again. Then give them 5 of their favorite plants. Later, chat with them when your personality aspects are at level 10. Then give them 10 of their favorite plants. Once you max out your personality and provide 16 of their favorite items, you'll get an interesting romantic sub-story to complete. So there are two secret casinos on the map that you can access as soon as you hit level 4 in confidence. The gambling hall is close to Kinka Bridge. There will be two NPCs who won't let players pass them unless Ichiban has a level 4 in confidence. The second secret casino is found in Chinatown near the public toilet. You need a 4 in confidence to access this area as well. After speaking to an NPC standing outside, you can enter through a toilet stall and a secret door. On the different maps in the game, there are certain people willing to provide you with what we'll call special services. Taking these special services costs about 100k yen and will result in improvements to your personality and physical health. Though there are five different people in the game that can provide you with these services, they're not consistently found at their locations of choice. Sometimes they're there, other times they're not. It seems like it's a matter of chance if you'll find them. If you go to the locations where they're supposed to be found and they're not there, you can either come back later, leave for another city, then return, or change the time of day by resting at the survive bar. Below I'll link Cyrix guide for specific places where you might find them. The ability to plant and grow seeds unlocks in Chapter 4. Speak with Iroha at the survive bar and you'll get access to the planter boxes outside. You might also run into additional planting locations over in Hamakita Park and other places on the map. Planting the seeds is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is return later to harvest the goods. Using fertilizer that you can purchase at numerous locations will cut down on the amount of time you have to wait. So that's one way to accelerate the process. The yield always produces more than one of whatever you planted, and you continue the process, you might get a hold of mysterious components, like compost, seeds, and bulbs. These items produce higher level restoratives. Creating restoratives with the items that you harvest from the planter boxes saves money. To unlock recipes, speak to Aroha at the survive bar. After you can use all the items you've grown to create food items, restoratives, and gifts for the romantic pursuits I mentioned previously. Some people might ask, I love the Yakuza series, but I don't like turn-based RPGs. Should I play this? For some players, the decision to make combat turn-based in Yakuza 7 was a deal-breaker. The thing is that apart from that change, all the expected elements and side content that make the Yakuza series fun and unique are still available. So it's up to you whether or not you're willing to overlook that. I feel you'd be missing out on a ton of enjoyable content if you feel the change is too damaging to the experience. Subbed or dubbed? I prefer subbed, though I can't deny the talent that went into the development of an English language experience. I'd rather listen to it in Japanese as the game takes place in Japan. Is this game a good entry point for newcomers to the series? I would say it is, but some might disagree with me. Check my video on where to start the Yakuza series for details. The creators said that Like a Dragon was meant to be an entry point for people new to the series. The story is completely self-contained though. Some of the references and easter eggs in the game might fly over your head. You'll be able to figure them out if you decide to play the other games in the series after. Some of the characters that appear in Like a Dragon might dispel some of the tension that you'd feel when playing through the previous titles for the first time. Can I play through the game using the default jobs only? It's possible, but I wouldn't try it. You need a dedicated healer and a source of elemental damage if available, so you're likely going to want to pick different jobs to make the battles less painful and slow. Question, what are some of the best places to grind? The best places in order of unlocks are first in chapter three, the Isazaki and Jincho dungeon. After that, Sotenbori battle arena, and then go to the Kanrocho underground dungeon. Question, where's the dragon cart minigame? You'll find it in Hamakita Park on the northeast side. What do stats do? Going over all of them is a little beyond the scope of this video, so I linked a good resource on stats below. Silvertip rates agility as one of the best stats to develop as characters with a high AGI can hit mobs multiple times per turn. After the attack stat, dexterity is also good to prioritize as you'll be able to regularly dodge powerful attacks. 
Question, where is the pawn shop or place to sell stuff? As far as Yokohama is concerned, check out the side story number 4 called One Man's Trash which opens up on the Saki Street. You'll probably bump into it very early on. If you still have access to Kamarocho, you can go back to our favorite place, Ibusu Pan, and sell items. Next question, what to sell? It's funny because I've said the same thing in nearly every video I've made on this channel. The metal plates are in the game specifically for selling. They serve no other purpose that I know of but to make money. Question. What to spend money on? First of all, if you find yourself with a fair amount of cash, you should make sure to deposit it at an ATM. Apart from upgrading weapons and other gear, I would recommend spending it at the vocational school. Developing your personality is what allows you to access so much gated content in this game, including new skills, new employees to recruit, entry to the casinos, and more. Question, where to buy materials? There is a truck in Hamakita Park where you can purchase most materials. When you start to get into higher level upgrades, the recipes will include items that might be difficult to find. You can always check what materials you require for upgrades using your smartphone app with the Anvil. There are also other trucks nearby that sell flowers, seeds, and ingredients. Next question, where to find insects? Apart from the numerous minigame vendors in the game, Hamakita Park is also a good place to find and harvest insects. You can run around anywhere on the greens to find them. What goes well with cucumber? Malts go well with cucumber. What carries over into New Game Plus? Your character level, job levels, and all the money you made carries over. You get to keep most of your items except for certain story items. Your equipment, pound mates, tojo crests, and money earned in management mode will all be available. What will not carry over is bond levels between your characters, your sub stories, and you'll still have to reach rank 100 and management mode to unlock Aerie again. What level to beat the game? There are different opinions surrounding this topic. Some have recommended being at least level 75 before attempting the grand finale, but there are plenty of people who have finished the game in their mid to high 50s. It's just a matter of how much tolerance you have for grinding and how much trouble you're willing to put up with against the final boss. If you want to have an easier time in the finale, I would recommend grinding more. How many chapters are there? There are 15 chapters in total. How to change jobs. To change a character's job, talk to Ridika at Hello Work. Ridika is located on the left of the director at Hello Work's counter. Players will only be able to switch to a job if they meet all the requirements. For example, Eri needs to be level 20 to become a hostess, while Kasuga needs a level 3 charisma before he can take the foreman job. Question, how to change costumes. When you go back to Hello Work to change jobs, you change the outfit for each job you want to switch to. However, during your first playthrough, outfits will only show when you are in battle and in certain cutscenes. You will have to wait until you've completed the entire story to see the outfits out in the open world in premium mode. Question, how to take pictures. In chapter two, after you've got your smartphone, simply press up on the D-pad to enter camera mode. There you can use filters and your party will automatically pose. Question, how many party members are there in the game? Altogether, there are seven total party members that you can have in your roster, but I'll leave it to you to discover who they all are. How to change difficulty. As you started playing, you might have noticed that there's a difficulty option in the settings menu, but it's grayed out. So how to change it. You first need to complete the game on the default difficulty. Though it's called normal, it may feel easy to some. Don't worry because there will be difficulty spikes coming up in the later stages of the game. Where to get premium sushi? To get this premium sushi set, you have to visit a Papo convenience store. Unfortunately, not just any Papo will have it. You need to go over to the Papo nearest Janai Station. Where is the survive bar? If you forgot already where to find it, you can search for it on the map. It's found in the bar district on the west of the map in Yokohama. Once you use the cab there, you can always fast travel to the bar by using the cabs. Where to find toilet paper? You can purchase packs of pocket tissues from the vendor where you go to play the Can Quest minigame unlocked in Chapter 3. There are some other useful items you can get from Kansan's recycling shop, so make sure to investigate his inventory. You might find some things you require for other missions. Where is the Ichiban Confections business minigame? This is a question I see a lot of people asking. When they can't remember how to get back to the business minigame, they either go to Google to search for it or they leave comments on my videos asking where to find it. 
And instead of just telling you where it is, I'm going to do you one better. There should never be a time where you don't know where to find something in these games. In every Yakuza game, there should be a location directory on the map page that you can access by either pressing triangle or Y, depending on your platform. Just spend some time going through all of the locations in the menu until you know where everything is. You should never be lost again. And there you have it. You know everything you need to know to get the best possible start in Like a Dragon. If you're enjoying the game and plan to play other titles in this series, then this channel was made for you. I create guides and commentary for RGG games and spin-offs, so don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel or make suggestions for future videos, check my Patreon for details. What has been your favorite side content in the game so far? Please let me know in the comments. And I'll see you later in Camarocho.